even if the iPad cannot replace a Mac for me, if it can replace a Mac or a PC for a lot of people, uh, then that's something I should be concerned with um, as someone who makes software. Hello, I'm Radek. I'm Michael. And this is the podcast. A sounding board for interesting ideas and insights. We discuss books read I want to share with you. As well as technology and productivity, which is what we do by day working on our app, Nosby. Or whatever else comes to mind. First of all, I wanted to acknowledge everybody who tweeted us or emailed at us um, after uh, we asked for it in our 100th episode. Uh, it was cool to see so many people uh, say kind of words about this, this show. Yeah, thank you so much. It was it was actually nice to, and and many of the people who tweeted were first time. I saw them first time on Twitter, so it was I mean yeah. first time you know that I met them on Twitter. Let's say so it was nice, very very cool. Thank you. Hey, keep tweeting on us. You know we don't we don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but today we wanted to talk about the iPad. Yeah, iPad was one of the main announcements in uh, WWDC that we both attended and that we recorded and uh, there in San Diego, uh, San Diego, San Jose. And now with the focus of uh, for the you know uh, the new iPad Pro, the iOS 11 features and things like that, uh, many people are again talking about the fact that maybe maybe iPad can be treated seriously and with some respect and be treated as a you know as a proper computer. Right. So. So far, it, it seems like you're one of the two people on the internet, there being Federico Kovitici, who's like super crazy about using your iPad for everything, like for real work. Um, I think we mentioned this a couple of times on the show, but back in the day, I think like three, four years ago, way before this, this was um, uh, something common, you wrote a book called iPad Only discussing apps and just ways of working with the iPad for productive uses and not just as a toy or for, um, you know, creative work. Yeah, um, uh, I know. Uh, I'm a little bit crazy with, with you know, j- just using my iPad. But, and, you know, as full disclosure, it's not like I don't own a Mac. Uh, I have an iMac that we use right now. But, uh, but frankly, iPad is my main computer. I'm, I'm doing most of my work on the iPad, uh, you know, in 90% or 80, 90%. And uh, when I'm away from home, 100% because I only take my iPad with me. So uh, I have optimized uh, my work uh, for the iPad and I've done it, I, I mean, I, I started doing it a few years back actually. So not with iOS 11, not with iOS 10, with iOS 6. So pretty far, far away. So um, before I, uh, before we start the whole thing, because there are several concepts, you know, that, 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 um, that you know, drew me to iPad and why I started using it on the iPad. First of all, um, uh, some background. I I always liked light devices, you know, light laptops. Like if you would ask me, you know, years ago, what would be the ba- the best feature of my laptop? I would say uh, the weight and uh, the battery life. So the, the, there were two most important things. So I would buy, for example, ThinkPads that were pretty light when I was before the Mac. And uh, for me, the, the, the portability uh, was always important because hey, we have no office, so I can work from anywhere. So if I can work from anywhere, I don't want to schlep a, a big, you know, honking laptop. I want to have a light uh, portable device. And um, it was iPad 3 uh, with, uh, when it was announced with Retina display, this display, so with Retina screen, that uh, with um, cellular connectivity, um, and it was 2012 when I started, when the apps for the iPad started getting serious, so the iPad was already two years old and the the apps started being reasonably you know fine and reasonably um, um, attractive to use and also as a way to um, uh, for us at Nosby to start working on an iPad app because the one that we had well I didn't like so much uh, so um, I started you know working more work, working more on the iPad and and just looking if I could uh, you know leverage this device and use it more and when I when I go out from home just you know work on it right uh, so at this point uh, it seems to me pretty clear that one can use an iPad for uh, quite a lot of things uh, you clearly do I, I think that the one guy on the internet who's probably most well known for it uh, is Federico Vitici, who writes a lot mm-hmm. 
about you know working with with the iPad, but you know to me right now it's it's not a question of whether it's possible at least to some extent. The mm-hmm. question is why? Like what's okay. What's so good a- about the iPad? Why why would you make your life harder to try to work on an iPad? Like why not use a real computer? Sure, it's smaller, thinner, lighter, uh, but so what? Like um, the the MacBook One is not much bigger, not much thicker, not much more, um, uh, not not much heavier. And it is a real computer. Like, sure, iPad is nice as a consumption device for browsing Twitter, for watching YouTube. But like, what's the point? Like, why? What What's better about the iPad? That's that's the thing I, I want mm-hmm. you and, and everyone listening uh, to like sell me on this idea. Pitch me why would you make your life so hard for this? Okay, so uh, first of all. Um just stop this with life's whole heart. Actually, it's not that hard. Uh, but okay. Um, do you know that usually, I mean, people say usually that constraints are actually good for you, you know, constraints, right? Because constraints, um, like force you to think outside of your box, like th- get out of the box and think, you know, outside of the box. So that's the first thing. So constraints. And, um, what I realized when I was working on my computer was that I was getting lazy. I was doing things in a not productive way or not optimal way because I could because the computer like I I wasn't optimizing uh, my 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 work to processes or to you know to the things I was doing you know like for example um, to scale a picture on the computer I would just you know open the the app for for you know for 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 photos I would put open the the the, the picture there would yeah, you know, go to an, an, a menu to to shrink the picture. Would shrink it, would save it, and then would put the name and then whatever. It it would take me like you know two or three minutes. You know, um, let's say I'm not a big Photoshop you know user, but you know I I knew how to do it and it would take me that much time. Um, and then I realized I was doing many things like that. So uh, and and of course this can be done a little better. You can just have a script that you know automatically shrinks this kind of picture to this kind of size and it's done. It's, 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 and if you, if you, like, if you're doing something many times, uh, you usually should be optimizing, right? And I wasn't, I was just using the computer and, and I knew that, you know, how it's done. So I wasn't like, I wasn't growing uh, and, 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 and exploring the computer anymore because uh, I knew it very well. So it was just easy. So the, because I can do this like this, I'm going to just do it like this, right? I'm not going to learn the new way of doing it because I can't do it like that. And, and my computer is powerful enough. So there is no way. It's like this thing when you stop optimizing applications because you say, you know, the, 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 the iPhones are just you know, twice as fast next year. So why would I optimize for performance if like next year is going to be just faster? So why would I, right? So that's the first thing. And um, uh, because I realized when I started working on the iPad is that I had to optimize that, you know, to, blo- to blog a blog post, I would have to do this, this, and this, bomb. Right, I would have a process for that, and I had to actually consciously design a process to get the post done. And by doing that, I realized I'm actually doing it faster on the iPad than on the, on the computer because it's, it's it's like a strict process that helps me uh, go through it. Um, and uh, so it was the first thing, first first optimization, and just uh, building on that. I always wanted to be more like to have everything in the cloud, you know, to be like to be more. Um, to be able to access mo- most of my information from the cloud. I thought, you know, it, it, again, no, no office, you know, uh, freedom of working from anywhere. I thought it would be actually useful to, um, to be like that, to be able to access only inf- all the information that I need uh, from the cloud. But because my laptop was, you know, had a very big hard drive, um, like I didn't optimize for that. I was like, I have everything on my laptop. Why would I optimize for the cloud? Because you know, like I put, I would put some of the things on the cloud, but I would just keep most of this on, on the on the on the laptop, and I would have a local backup here. So if I take my laptop anywhere with me anyway, why would I do it, right? So with the iPad, I had to rethink the whole thing. I had to buy the big Dropbox, you know, subscription, put everything in Dropbox, put my all my notes in Evernote, put all my you know tasks in Nosby, like really structure all my clouds, so on my cloud storage in such a way that I would have to, you know, because I mean, otherwise, if I would take my iPad and would go out, I wouldn't have access to certain files. 
and I and and you know and you know I need access to certain files. I'm a, I'm a CEO of a small company, and some people ask me things, and I want to be able to deliver these. So so I would cut myself off. So uh, changing to the iPad forced me to go to the cloud to really like to set up again to set up things and to know okay I have these kind of files here these kind of notes here these kind of tasks here like the, the photos here like I would have to structure this and I never had the motivation to do it because my laptop was so powerful and could handle anything so why would I All right um, but w when you're talking about workflows or, or you say consciously design a process mm -hmm. do you think that this is how like normal people think of, of using an iPad like I I, I, I get that um, out of constraints of the iPad versus the um, more uh, kind of versatile, um, you know, powerful ways you, you can just move things, files, whatever, between apps on, on the Mac, especially like before iOS 11, before iOS 9, etc. Uh, this was the way to do it, to use, uh, for example, apps like Workflow and, you know, your, or your editorials and whatnot to like create, design a process to like, move from one step to another to achieve a, um, a complex task. But um, I understand that, that the constraints force you to do it, but like, I, I don't think that, like uh, iPad is, uh, people talk about the iPad as a computer, as a simpler computer. And this does not sound simpler. This sounds like a nerdy way to approach a problem, which is, which is good, like I, I understand that. No. Um Okay, so, so now you're talking about workflows and stuff, and this is new. I mean, when I was in 2012, when I was switching to iPad, there were no workflows. There was no workflow. There was no way to automate things. All right, so what, what, what do you mean by design the process then? It, yeah, okay, so um, the apps that I, that I started using. So I was using certain apps for, for different things. So, um, uh, for example, to publish a blog post on, on a computer, um, I would have to go through several apps. I would have to write. I would write on one of the apps to write. Then would copy this text somewhere else. Then would move it somewhere else. Then would you know upload the picture from somewhere else. Like I would use several um, uh, several apps and several steps on the on the Mac to get the blog post done. It, like, let's keep with this example. I mean, there, 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 mm -hmm. I'm sure there, sure there are better examples. And there are examples in my book, the iPad only book, which is pretty old now, pretty dated, but it's still relevant. And in on on the iPad, I just I, I found an app where I could just write the blog post, publish from there, it would, like, the, the process would be uh, uh, straightforward. To, to write the blog post, I would go to this app, write the blog post there, publish from there, everything would be like contained in this one thing. So it was really easy for me. It, 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 it didn't require additional steps because this one container, like this one app would, would, would just serve the purpose. So, so, so what you're saying is that on iOS, instead of like bigger monolithic apps, you'd have a lot, a large number of like smaller, more focused apps so that like you could mix and match smaller pieces to, to get whatever you need to get done, done, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and, and again, and, and, you know, built on that, uh, what I liked about the iPad, especially in iOS 6 days, even, uh, there was no split view or anything. There was just one app at a time and one app at a time. Uh, at this moment in my life, especially, was really like good because I didn't have to worry about you know window management and things like that. I would just open the app, write, open the app, you know mind map, open the app, I don't know, write, and like, like they I would just do one thing at a time. And um, uh, I was laughing that I actually was always using two computers at a time. I had my iPhone and my iPad, so my iPhone was like my second screen, <laughs> you know, and and iPad was my main screen. But the what I remember from you know, starting there uh, was the fact that, thanks to the fact that it was one app at a time, I felt more productive because I got more deep work done. The deep work that we discussed in the previous episodes. Uh, I, I could focus more because uh, with, with the Mac, and especially if you have a big screen, you know, you have Twitter here going here, these things going here, these going here, Slack, you know, whatever. So things are coming at you. And, and because you have a big screen, like, there's no problem to put all these windows there. Um, and of course, you can do that. You can force to close the windows or, or, or do the different tricks. Uh, tricks. On the iPad, these tricks were built in. <laughs> there was no other way to put a different window. There was just one app at, at a time. And this was really helpful. It was tremendously helpful uh, when I started. And now with split screen, uh, what I like about the, the, new, like the new iOS and the, the iPads is you can 
still use two apps at a time or even sometimes three now with iOS 11 or you know, three and picture and picture, but still it's pretty constrained and pretty limited. Which you know, which limits your focus, which limits you know uh, your um, uh, your temptation for distraction. And for me, this was really, 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 really tempting. You know, one app at a time. You open this app, you do this thing. You know, like more focused work, more deep work, uh, and and uh, less distractions. I mean, from the perspective of iOS 11, it, it it kind of makes sense because I haven't used it much yet, obviously. But um, the the kind of "Quote unquote window management system," though no one wants you to call it that on iOS 11, is a really cool trade-off between power, as in having multiple things at the same time, but without what you're saying, the uh, the constant distraction and and the the complexity of of managing overlapping windows. So I, I appreciate that, but you know, you you've you've said about um, how it how it's great that you get this focused environment. You know, before iOS 9, where you had split screen, uh, and and you know, you're saying that at that point in your in your life, it made sense for you. But it it sounds like um, just being apologetic about the iPad when it didn't have split screen. Then oh, it's so good that it's so simple and so focused. But then like once we got those things and we got to the point where we are now in iOS 11, like you can see that it's clearly better to be able to to see multiple things and, and interact between more than one app at a time to achieve a more complex task, which is what you could always do on a Mac. Not really. So, uh, uh, hold on. I'm not Federico Vitici, who uses his 13-inch iPad Pro with split screen all the time. Actually, if you have a 13-inch iPad Pro, there is no other way to use it. You have to just ho- open two things at, uh, at the same time because otherwise there's too much white space. So right. uh, so, so that's that's him. But if you see me using my, my 10-inch iPad, 9.7-inch iPad, and hopefully tomorrow I'm going to pick up my 10.5-inch, um, when you see that, what you see is that most of the time I still use one app. Most of the time, I still use one app to do get things done. I have, um, uh, like just yesterday, I was designing a mind map for my presentation. When I open Keynote, I usually open Keynote and, and prepare the presentation on the Keynote. And sometimes when I need stuff, so I need reference and I need things like that, then I just uh, pull out the split screen, use the split screen for a while, but then get back to the one app, app at a time and still um, use the iPad as one, my, one major app that I, I, I use. And then this additional app, sometimes if I need it, if not, I take it out and, 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 and stay with the, with the main app. So for me, the paradigm of having one app at a time is still valid. With split screen, it's just more convenient because I can access several new things and several additional things. So some things are, are, are faster and easier. Before that, as I said, I would just put my iPhone next to my iPad to be able to see the second screen, you know, to have something else on the, on the second screen, like reference material, you know, other, other, you know, other um, browsing sessions, uh, you know, other websites. So I would, I would use my iPhone as the second screen to my iPad. Now I don't have to do that. I can have a split screen, so I have like an iPhone uh, just on the same screen. Uh, but still, the way I use the iPad is mainly uh, using one app at a time. Mm. So it, it really does come down to what you say, constraints being advantages in, in, in disguise. That, um, yeah. to, to put it in, in a more controversial way, that uh, the Mac is too powerful for your, for your own good. Like, you know, overlapping windows being powerful because you can, you know, see multiple stuff, but they just end up keeping you distracted because they actually, you know, the power they, they pro- provide is rarely what you actually need. And, and <laughs> the, the default thing just just keeps you con- constantly distracted with visuals, with, you know, blinking things, with Twitter in, in the background. No, really, uh, it, it, when, you, when you see me work, when you see me work here in my home office where I have an iMac with an external monitor, so I have two monitors, you know, uh, a smaller and, and the iMac, and, and then, then I have my iPad. And... What you will see is that I, if like, if I want to manage several things at once, I open. The, I, I mean, I use the iMac for some some things, for some Windows and everything. But I want to, if I want to get focus work done, <laughs> I just take the iPad and go away, and just use the iPad, or just even in front of my iMac, I just use the iPad, like for my mapping, for writing, for things like that. I just prefer this uh, focused, condensed, this uh, like you know uh, constrained uh, environment uh, to get things done. All right. So uh, constraints are advantages in disguise. Uh, force you to consciously design a process, so smaller, more focused apps, and force you to move to the cloud, which has its own benefits. What else? Yeah, I'll, 
I'll keep coming. Okay, so one of the things I discovered when using the iPad was that the keyboard actually is optional. So it, we nerd like the keyboards. We like the keyboard shortcuts because you know, like the command C, command D, command shift, uh, you know, Z, whatever. Like we use the the keyboard a lot, and there are people. Um, I'm not one of them, but there are people who can practically manage the whole Mac on the just using the keyboard without without even touching the touchpad. But um, what I what I what I realized is that um, uh, on the on the iPad, I mean, anyway, with kind of work that we do, the keyboard is really optional. So very often, the keyboard is in the way. And keyboard forces, forces us to write more or to just use keyboard more when we don't have to. And for me, uh, having the iPad, uh, using the iPad, uh, very often I would use it not in a horizontal way, um, uh, like, like when you do when you have the smart keyboard connected, but vertical way. It, it, it's just, it was just nicer for me to read and nicer for me to inter interact with the content. And also still, while just, you know, con consuming the content, also working on the content. But just, you know, when I was, um, uh, when I was correcting the text, like whenever, for example, when I was, uh, uh, we, we were doing Proactive Magazines, whenever I, I, I was, my, my favorite part to, to do it on the iPad was that I had the whole Proactive Magazine, like I was re reading it vertically, I had my keyboard disconnected and I was just you know when I had to correct something I would point, point it there write write something quickly uh, correct it but then the keyboard would vanish and I could keep scrolling keep reading it was just nicer experience to to have the keyboard only optionally popping up but uh, but using the buttons you know the, the the commands you know all these things that you know the apps provide it the, the iOS apps provide um, to interact with content you know to interact with with what's, what's happening on the screen it was just more fun to use and um, especially, um, I remember. Um, so now, now I'm a little bit disappointed with the smart keyboard. On one hand, I really love it for the iPad Pro. On the other hand, I really liked um, um, uh, previously to have the the Logitech keyboard, which would enable me to put my iPad in a vertical way, because because writing mm. in a vertical way uh, was just so much fun. Because like it was just like. We are used to the books or, or, or you know, or, you know, paper. Paper was normally vertical when you would write it or read it or whatever. So, so for me, writing on, on a vertical screen was even more joy. Like it was, it, it made, made more sense in the era where the laptops were getting wider screens. I had a vertical screen, which was just contrary to the, you know, to the, to the trend and was just joy to use. And it is joy to use. Now with the split screen and with the smart keyboard, I got used to having the iPad also in a horizontal way. Although when I when I write uh, longer texts, I, I use, uh, I, uh, here, here in my home office, I put the iPad vertically. I have a stand here for that. And I use the, the Logitech um, Bluetooth keyboard uh, to type if I want to write something. So anyway, interacting with the screen, being able to rotate the screen and interact with, 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 with what's happening on the screen in a vertical way and horizontal way, so both ways, and without the burden of the keyboard, uh, was just more fun to use, was more fun. And I realized that very often in my work, because my, I mean, again, this is my work. So my work consists of writing stuff as well, uh, giving feedback to people, but giving feedback to people uh, was very often not giving feedback by writing a lot of paragraphs, but actually pointing out things so, uh, you know, annotating things and sending them back. So I uh, was reviewing stuff, was reviewing texts. So for all these kind of workflows, like reviewing, giving feedback, giving visual feedback, iPad was, is, is just perfect because uh, uh, I can write on the screen. I can, you know, uh, annotate on the screen. I, uh, I don't need the keyboard so much. Uh, and and uh, I got lots done by just having the simple, uh, the simple interaction with the screen, with the touch screen. And um, that's why for my type of work, uh, it was just uh, perfect. All right. Uh, the thing about, about annotating makes a lot of sense. Like it's, it's very unnatural to do on a Mac and it's just perfect exactly. on, a, on a large touch screen. But otherwise, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm not getting this argument that you said that keyboards are really not that necessary, that it's, it's like, it's in the way. Like how so? Most of what we do, I feel like, is in writing. Uh, I mean, obviously, obviously, I write a lot of code, but that's that's different. That's something iPad cannot handle and will not be able to handle for at least a while. But you do a lot of writing for the blog, for the books. We both do a lot of writing for like uh, design documentation, um, just you know, um, collaborating asynchronously. Okay. Uh, in Nosby via comments, in Slack, like there's so much writing in, in what we do. And, and that's one thing where the iPad uh, falls short because, you know, by default, it only has an on-screen keyboard, which is not as fast. You can have the smart keyboard, which is way better. 
but still not as good. I mean, you even acknowledge when you're in your home office, um, I, I suspect that uh, you'll f- you'll probably find as as I did that it's most comfortable writing on the on the Microsoft keyboard. Um, okay, so um, uh, several things. Uh, when uh, when I give feedback uh, uh, on the iPad, so f- first of all, I was very skeptical about writing on the iPad initially, until I got an app called Tap Typing, which uh, was like a like an app to teach you to touch type on the on the screen of the iPad. Oh, sure, I I, I can do that as well, but it's not nearly as good as 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 writing on a real keyboard. Yeah, but you know, it's um, I'm like twenty percent slower than normally, so than, than than on the normal keyboard, so it's not a big deal. Did you measure that? Yes, I did. Exactly, yeah, twenty percent. Because uh, I write around 50, 50 something words per minute, so it's not really fast. I'm not really a fast typer. And with uh, with no. Um, uh, with no, no, sorry, sixty words per minute, and then fifty words per minute on the screen. So um, so it's you know I'm like twenty percent slower. So uh, maybe twenty five, but you know it's not like, like twice slower, right? So what I would do very often, and again, for me, joy to use, have the iPad, for example, browse browse Twitter. Uh, let's say browsing Twitter or you know whatever doing uh, browsing comments in Nosby vertically because it was just I have more tasks I I, I think the comment threads are, are longer so I would do it in a vertical way and then if I want, needed to write a short comment I would just do it right there and with the with the screen keyboard it would be slow but whatever it was but it's a short comment but if I would, wanted to write a longer comment I would just rotate the screen write uh, quicker uh, uh, on the on this bigger keyboard the bigger on screen keyboard pause the comment, turn the screen, the screen again, and keep browsing. It was just more fun. And it's just more fun. Uh, I mean, you know, once you start using that, it's, it's, it is more fun. I mean, really. And it's the same with my mind maps. When I do mind mapping, um, it's the same. I, I, I usually uh, work on, you know, both horizontal and vertical. I switch whenever, you know, whatever I prefer that moment, you know, which, which, which kind of thread I want to see bigger. And when I need to write something, I just add it there and then move things around with my finger. So... Yeah, for me, uh, like for me, it was just uh, you know, it's it, it is just joy, joy, like more joy to use, and because of the key, because the keyboard is optional, as again, again, you know, when I need it, it's there, but when I don't need it, I have the whole screen for me. So, um, so the last thing was, um, it was a big one for me to switch, uh, and this is a big one for for many people to switch from thinking about files and thinking about apps. For these purposes, so we already talked about it that you know s- m- mm-hmm. more single apps for single purposes, things like that. Now there are more; th- there will be more bound, you know, with uh, iCloud, with iCloud uh, Drive, with Files app, actually on the iOS 11. So it's going to be more like a computer a little bit. But for me, you know, especially back then, uh, I had to realize that you know f- files are no more, no, no longer that necessary or not that necessary. They are necessary, but they're not. I'm not creating files. I'm creating output i'm creating things before switching to the ipad i was really structured with files i would have folders really neatly done mm. on, on my computer i was really careful about you know where i would put my files where i would put, would, put, would put my stuff but i realized that by leveraging the apps i can have access to the information actually faster so for example with evernote i quickly switched to evernote because whenever i would i would, I would you know take a picture in evernote or take a you know um uh, uh, take a note in Evernote, uh, it would rec- also recognize the text in the picture, for example. So to find that note later, I would just go to Evernote, type the, the, the search, and it would be found. And actually, right now, you can even do it on the, on the spotlight uh, on, the, on the iOS. But uh, it, was, it was really easy. I knew where it was, I knew uh, how to find it, and, I knew, uh, and it wasn't a file. It was a note in Evernote. Just like you know, there is a task in Nosby, right, or a project in Nosby. It's not the file. Uh, it's 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 a task in, in, in inside this 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 app, and um, it took me a while. I had to get used to it because before that, so and, and every everything else I would put into Dropbox. So uh, and gradually I was moving away from from using the Dropbox so much because I was you know putting my data in this you know kind of silos. So that was a little bit uh, different. But I realized that thanks to that, again we're coming back to this productivity thing. I knew that you know to do this, I just open this app and do it there. To do that, I, like, for me, it was like a better, better trigger mechanism, you know, to to work mm. instead of just having the file and I can open this file in so many, you know, again, computer was, was too powerful. I can open this app in this, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, open this file in this app and then this app and then this, you know, like 
<laughs> too, ma too many choices, you know. <laughs> and with with the, right. with the iOS and with with I with iPad, I had less choice. What, what I understand by this is that the um, kind of the root point of the hierarchy changed. That instead of starting with your structure of files and then opening it yes. in a certain app, you start from apps, and then apps have their own sandbox with files, and then over time they can interact with like files that are common for for all sorts of um, uh, apps, like especially with iOS 11, where you can have like um, storage of, of files that don't fit into one app or in Dropbox, or and then open from there. But it's like secondary. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So that was that. So it, it it really like for me it took me a while to really get to that. But another thing, what I really liked about uh, the iPad is the appification of websites. So um, mm. very often, uh, like uh, <laughs> whenever we are booking a hotel with my wife, we were booking a hotel with my wife. Now she knows the good way. But she would even on the iPad she would open Booking.com. She would just write type Booking.com, and I was like. Why mm -hmm. would you do that? There is an app for that, right? So, for example, I would like for the traveling. I had all the traveling apps, uh, you know, downloaded. So I wouldn't go to Booking.com website. I would open Booking Booking.com app, which I would be logged in there. You know, it just felt good. Then I mean, it felt safer, felt logged in. You know, I, like it, and and the, and of course the the app leveraged you know the the gestures, you know, touching, swiping, and things like that. So it was just easy to use, and um, and many websites turned. To, to apps uh, and you know of course you know just like ours like Nosby is for the iPad and it's an app it's not you know you don't go you, you can go to Nosby.com on the you know and log in on the Safari on the iPad but, but why, why would you do, do that if you can just get the iPad uh, app so it's, it's the same with you know with lots of things so suddenly instead of going to the websites I was going to apps so I could really organize my work again so for example I would have a travel folder with all the travel apps and um, I have my travel information in TripIt I would have my um, you know the booking.com Expedia like Hipmon like, many different you know apps for for traveling and the same for different purposes so for me this appification again felt more productive and feels more productive because you know to book a hotel I go there I use this app. I check it out. You know, when it's there, I'm just gonna book it. I'm gonna. I, I have it there, so um, it's saved in my account, and I can pull it out. You know, even if I'm if I'm offline. But so 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 this appification, uh, uh, especially um, uh, in 2012 when I when I started uh, using the iPad so much, I was just surprised how many apps there were. And now they are more. They are definitely better than than they were back then. But but even then, I was just surprised that it was just. A more straightforward again way to use the internet. Like you wouldn't use the internet by navigate. I mean, I would still use the Safari to navigate some of, to some of the websites, of course. But like I would just use the apps a lot more to access the internet and not just you know through Safari. Okay, that that is interesting. But isn't it just a consequence of the constraints of the iPad in, in the sense that, um, like, in 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 many circumstances, I I can't see how. Um, or it can be argued that it's not that much better as doing the website on the desktop. Like the websites on an iPad suck uh, because it's much harder to do a, a good feeling website uh, for mobile. But it's like, I want to book a hotel. I go to booking.com on, on my Mac and it's really fast. I don't have to download anything. It doesn't ask me for permissions. I don't have to install some uh, airline app that th then just sits there, sends me spam, maybe tracks me in the background. Like, I don't know what it's going to to do it's just like you go to the website you do your thing and you exit and it just works and it's fine and on on an ipad it the websites are often a bad experience so you're forced to go with the application route but um in, in many cases in many cases sure i can see that but but for many like things that you do that you don't do so often so it's not like evernote or nosby obviously but but like you want uh to fly somewhere or book a hotel like um is it, is it really that better when you just want to like, uh, you know, fly somewhere and you have to download another stupid app? Well, um, 
It depends. It depends on the, of course, on the airline as well. Uh, for me, for example, one of sure. my favorite uh, ways to, um, my, one of my favorite water, water coolers was IMDb website, so Internet Movie Database, and their website uh, sucks on any device. It's just, it's just, yes. it's just really bad. So, and on the, and the iPad app, is, iPad app is really nice. So, so to use it on the iPad was just <laughs> a blessing. Uh, and and many apps I discovered uh, are, are are really taking advantage of the gestures, you know, of of, of tapping and 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 also other um, things. Like, for example, um, again, with the iPad, what you have is you have your camera with you at all times. Of course, it's stupid to take mm. pictures on the iPad, but it's not stupid to scan documents. So if there was a piece of paper, I could just literally scan it right there and send it right there. Uh, whereas having, an, having a piece of paper and the Mac, what do you do now? <laughs> like, you know, it's, right. it's, you, you need a scanner you know, to actually input this data to the, to the Mac or, I don't know, put it on the, on the FaceTime camera. Well, whatever. So it's like with the, with the iPad, scanning and, and the, the scanning apps that appeared uh, at that time and that are, that are now, now are just uh, so, much, so, so useful. So this would, again, simplify my, my office and simplify my accounting. I would just scan the documents with the iPad, move it there, and it was done. Sure, but, but you could always do it on an iPhone even if you use the Mac. So that's not a big deal. Speaking of the iPhone, another thing, another hidden feature of the iPad is the fact that once you set up things on the iPad, it is all iOS. So basically you have the, you have the same information, you have the same uh, you know, uh, setup or similar setup if you want to on the iPhone. So suddenly right. you have two mirror, mirror computers. So, uh, and this is really cool because very often I would catch myself just leaving the home without the iPad. But thanks to the fact that it was all iOS and I have my iPhone with me, I still have access to all my files, to all my notes, to all my tasks. I have access to everything that I prepared. Whereas if you, like, it's really hard to configure the Mac and the iPhone in the same way that you would have, you know, similar things. And, in, in, you know, having, having iPad and, and iPhone, they are different, but they are very similar. And, 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 and the apps are, you know, practically the same. Uh, and, 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 and especially the containers, I mean, what they contain. So uh, this was, I mean, this was so mind-blowing for me when the iPhone Plus showed up. So when the iPhone 6 Plus showed up, I suddenly started working on the iPhone a lot more because, again, I had the data already there. I had the apps already there, uh, and and had, I had a bigger screen. So sometimes I would I wouldn't even bother pulling up my iPhone iPad if I could do something quickly on the iPhone directly because it was the same setup. So so by configuring iPad by by going iPad only, suddenly I have two mirror computers, one with a small screen and one with a bigger screen. Yeah, that is really uh, interesting. Uh, but it, it seems like a lot of the advantages um, that you mentioned for the iPad don't really seem that specific to the iPad. It's just that the iPad forced you to adopt things that might just be better anyway, yeah. uh, regardless of whether it's the iPad and, and a Mac. And uh, I will agree that a lot of um, things, good things, have started on iOS, but there was no reason not to do them on the Mac. And so it happened. So uh, moving stuff to the cloud, I mean, obviously Dropbox have, have been... Uh, there for a long time, but but Apple has done a lot of work to, um, you know, encourage apps to store things in the cloud. They they made iCloud Drive accessible through Finder. Uh, in uh, Sierra, they made they made it possible for you to sync your desktop, your your documents with with, with iCloud Drive, which makes them available everywhere, including your your iOS devices. Uh, there is a trend of like smaller, more focused apps. There is yeah, an see? app store to. The Mac App Store is is not is not um, ideal. You know, <laughs> it's not ideal. Uh, let, let's just say, um, but but uh, but but it just seems that a lot of those things are not really iPad related. They they happen on iPad first for historical reasons, or, or you know just because it was first, or just because it's it's the new thing. But it's not that. Um, it it makes iPad that much better when the same thing exists on the Mac. It's just you had to make the switch anyway. It's just that the iPad forced you to make the switch, whereas the, the Mac didn't. But it, it didn't mean that you couldn't adopt the new thing. And there are more things that frustrate me uh, because they make the iPad look better um, kind of unfairly because the Mac could also take advantage of them. We talked about LTE last week. Exactly. Why aren't there Macs with, with LTE? Like, sure, right now that's the thing that's definitely better about the iPad, but it's almost artificial. Like it's artificially making Mac worse as a 
kind of mobile device. The MacBook One is sure um, not quite the the iPad um, in terms of like physical dimensions and whatnot, but it's so light, so portable as a Mac. Uh, very you know approaching iPad, smaller than than the 13 inch uh, iPad Pro, but it doesn't have LTE. But it could have. And another thing is. Um, I, I, I have been wishing for years that Apple makes a common UI toolkit uh, for the Mac and for iOS so that so many more apps that are on iOS could be very easily ported to the Mac. And then you would have the advantages of the Mac, or what I will argue are the advantages, <laughs> but but also have the, the thing of apps syncing together between your devices, uh, which is obviously... A good thing. Yeah. So the, the, again, you, you touched on a very, very nice thing. So first of all, yes. The, if you, I mean, I, I, I in my recent article that I just, I just posted on my blog, I recommend getting the LTE, so the through 4G, whatever cellular version of the iPad, because this magic of pulling it out and being online right there. You know, without tethering, without searching for Wi-Fi, asking the cafe owner if they have if they have Wi-Fi and then give you this stupid password, like none of that. You just pull it out, you are online, just like with the with the with the iPhone. So this is magic. This is like you have the computer online all the time. And now with the True Phone, which they have this you know this kind of um, Apple SIM or whatever you call it, you can set up uh, the account, uh, the data plan uh, in one country and use it in any country in the world. So uh, and no roaming charges, nothing like that. So it's really really amazing. So. That's really cool with the iPad. And as you said, uh, many good things from the iPad were ported back to the Mac or, sh- or could be ported back to the Mac. And, uh, and you're totally right. Then some of the things that I mentioned or mo- most of the things that I mentioned today in this episode are just plain good routines to follow anyway. Like good things to do anyway, right? Like limiting yourself right. to one up at a time, you know, distractions and like, like many of these things are just good things anyway. But kind of iPad forced me to, 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 to do them. But again, I would like to highlight this one. Really, the touch interface and having the iPad, being able to rotate the iPad to vertical, horizontal, depending on what I'm doing, is just so much more fun. And having this and and be and an iPad being this light device that you can put put in a small messenger backpack and carry anywhere, anywhere, and just you know use it anywhere, really without actually feeling any additional you know weight. There, this is this is the fun part of the iPad, and the, and the, this is like this additional appeal that, that 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 convinced me to start you know being iPad only. So so yes, the good things you know the constraints. I mean the, all these good you know habits. Yes, but also the fun part, the the touching, the the um, the screen, the, the the additional sensors. You know the GPS, the the you know the the photos, the like all these things that. Uh, just they just make it just a joy a joy to use and and uh, yes a Mac is also a joy to use I I don't I don't say it's not but uh, for example if you're reading something longer on the on the Mac you are in this awkward position with this keyboard in front of you you know you like with the screen and reading it on the Mac, on the on the iPad in a vertical way you know lifting it up it's just so much nicer you know and so so both the consumption the interaction with the content the like the, the additional part of what we do every day it just makes the the the, the um the ipad compelling any final words before my takedown yeah so uh, i'll give you a story um a, a short one so i was in japan uh, with my wife uh, on vacation and uh, as always i would just take my ipad with me but because in, in Tokyo, there is this Ginza Apple store where they actually have an auditorium. I decided, you know, I'm on vacation, but maybe my wife will let me work for one day. So I asked uh, the management of the Ginza Apple store if I could do an Nosby event for our Nosby users in Japan. They agreed, and we did an Apple, I mean, a Nosby event in Apple store Ginza in the auditorium. Like 80 people, uh, the, the, I think the whole thing is 80 people. It was full, it was packed. We sent invites to, to Nosby users. So it was just in, in, one, in one day, we had like everything was gone. So it was fantastic. And now how the event was done. You love this one. So I had my iPad with my presentation in Keynote opened. I connected my iPad to the screen, I mean, to whatever they provided there, to the screen, to Push, to push my presentation, my keynote presentation to the screen. In the same time, I had my iPad connect through audio jack uh, to their audio, and I was calling via Skype to Poland, where uh, our Japanese uh, customer support representative was, was, was located. She was connected via Skype. So she was, um, so uh, the, the iPad was holding the Skype call while I was doing the presentation 
uh, the keynote presentation, and uh, and I would I would do the presentation and say things in English, and at the same time she would via Skype translate it simultaneously to Japanese. It was all handled handled by my small iPad. The Skype, the, the keynote, everything, it just worked and then we're connected to everything. It was fantastic. It was a, like a great iPad only experience. And that was what, 2012? It was 2013. All right. Yeah. So ways back. Yep. But, you know, that's, that to me is, is, is this thing. Like, um, I, I've seen you do some really impressive things on the iPad, uh, but they're only impressive because of the assumption that it is not quote unquote a real computer <laughs> you know a, a lot of the things that are impressive are things that are just common that that are just the way you you expect things to work uh on the mac um and and that's you know that that's part of my my problem with 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 the ipad that um the the fact that it's smaller and more more portable lighter um is certainly an, an advantage, but in most contexts, not a huge advantage. Like the, um, th there's a relatively small intersection w where having a MacBook um, is too annoying, but the iPhone also can can, you know, can do the job uh, in in between. Um, it also like yeah, uh, you're saying that it's more fun, and in many ways it, it is, but. I don't, I don't like for, for a computer, not, not for, you know, something I always have in my pocket, but for, for something to, to be like my main computer as your iPad is to you, I don't want more fun. I want as fast as possible. And a lot of things on the iPad are, are either not possible yet. Um, sure. A lot more things are possible than used to be just, you know, two years ago. Uh, I'll acknowledge that. But a lot of things are, are still not possible or, or just difficult to do, more difficult um, than, than on a Mac. Um, so, you know, the, the, the fact that, that, that you could handle all of this in 2014 on an iPad is, is impressive. But if you had, you know, today's MacBook One, which is not that much bigger, like it would be obvious that you can do it. It wouldn't be a, a big deal. It would be just like you using your computer, right? So, yeah. Totally. I mean, the, the 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 Mac is powerful, plenty powerful. The Mac is cool. Uh, you know, there are things you can do on the Mac. Uh, but what I loved about switching to the iPad was the fact that I actually spent so much time on, on the, you know working on the computer. I prefer it to be really fun. Anyway, that's the first thing. Second thing, I want this to be portable because I like being portable. I like going to cafes and work on the cafes. I, I like you know going around. So for me, this is really a, a key. And um, what I also like is constrain myself and you know as, 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 and we know that focus is right one of the most important things that we need right now and very often i think these powerful computers like very often we don't need that much power that you say you know we don't need a super fast processor like some people need that and i, I appreciate that but for example i don't need super processing power what i need is a focused environment where i can get my work done and of course ipad is not for everyone but uh, for, for, I think for, for arguably many more people, it can be one of the main computing devices for them if they let it you know, be. And it, it, it does require switching the mindset. It does require switching you know, this paradigm from, from, from files to apps, you know, to having, having th everything in the cloud. It requires a lot of changes. That's why people very often say, well, I, I just, you know, I left for vacation you know, with an iPad and I'm not as productive as on the Mac. Of course, if you haven't configured it, if you, if you haven't you know, given it some thought, then of course not. But on the other hand, if you would do that, you would find that there are so many, you know, you would discover so many new apps, so many new ways of getting things done, and so many actually more focused ways of getting things done, then you would appreciate them. So anyway, for me, this switch made me rethink the way I think about computer. And now I'm actually a better Mac user because I'm an iOS user, I think. All right, uh, so what I will acknowledge is that you're right. Uh, iOS and the iPad is a different paradigm. So a lot of things are just different, right? So you, you have to expect that switching to an iPad or using an iPad in, instead of a Mac um, is, is going to be different, right? And a lot of things are also different because of uh, the touch interface. So yes. you have to lear relearn your habits, learn new tools, learn new apps, learn new ways of interacting with, your, with the operating system and new ways of combining tools for complex tasks. That is just to be expected. 
Uh, I also acknowledge that that iOS got a lot better with kind of pro- productivity uh, stuff and will get better. Uh, iOS 9 brought us split screen. We got proper keyboard shortcuts. iOS 11 brought us much better multitasking, drag and drop, the, the files app, the file picker, screen recording, all sorts of little things that were just missing that, that used to be impossible, really uh, annoying to do on iOS are now easy. And... You know, also things like better physical keyboards, pencil, more will come over time. So, you know, that's fine. There's a lot of things that you cannot do yet, but there's no fundamental reason why iPad couldn't handle it, right? That's correct. There are also some things that the Mac just cannot do or is just not designed to do. Um, th- there are some things where the direct manipulation with the screen uh, is is just perfect, and it would be very unwieldy on a Mac. Like you mentioned, annotation. Um, that's a small use case, but but there are, there are more like this, mm-hmm. where um, being able to directly manipulate with what's on the screen is is really great. Um, things that require the camera or other sensors like gyroscope, accelerometer. Uh, there there are some things which are you know not not just toys, but things you'd expect to do on a computer that you can do on an iPad that you just cannot do. Uh, on the Mac, or it's it's just never going to be very good on the Mac. Yeah, and several interfaces of several apps with multi-touch, for example, when they leverage multi-touch, it's 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 something that you know it's hard to replicate on on a, on a Mac. Yeah, uh, I also do think that iPad probably will um, replace laptops for for a lot of people. Like a lot of people just don't need um, what. PC slash Macs can offer. Uh, they just don't need the extra capability. And there are obvious advantages to iPad in the sense that uh, it's it's simpler. Uh, the, the barrier of entry is uh, is easier. There's no, again, overlapping windows. There, there's no, um, you know, directly accessible file system, which is like hard to understand for a lot, a lot of people. It's just harder to get wrong. And it's small, light, portable. You can just touch with your finger, that's great. Uh, here's my where my kind of skepticism comes in in terms of treating an iPad as um, kind of a real computer, as, as something that the Mac competes with. And it, it doesn't have to do with, with, with the things that you cannot do yet, but, you know, again, fundamentally, there's no reason why you couldn't do it. It's just that, you know, you, you mentioned how a lot of things are more fun to do on, a, on an iPad, but in the context of using it as a kind of a real computer, as a productivity tool, I don't, you know, it's not that important for me that it's it's fun to, to, to do it. I just want as fast as possible, right? There's a lot of things that are, are possible on an iPad uh, or on iOS, even on an iPhone, but I feel like they're, they're just not as fast and they're not going to be as fast um, as on the Mac, um, and things being fast is kind of fun when you can just do things super quickly. Uh, and some of that is um, what you said, keyboard shortcuts, and 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 that's getting uh, better. And uh, again, that, now that's something that um, iOS can do, um, though it doesn't yet take advantage of it. Uh, but in terms of like direct manipulation with with the screen, like the screen is is small. Uh, compared to what what you can have on the Mac, and and um, you know because you you it's designed so you can use it with your finger, um, the top targets have to be relatively large. So it, it just inherently limits the kind of re- your resolution of interaction w- with the device. So it's it's really difficult to put a lot of things on the screen, which makes it simple, makes it easier, but. It, it also means that things that on the Mac you design to just be all available to you. Like on iOS, you have to do extra taps. You have to do just extra work to get to the same stuff, right? In the context of um, programmers, and especially, there's been this, um, this talk for, for a long time how getting a big screen has a, a direct you know, uh, impact on, on, on your productivity. Now, that that's you know um, writing code is a very specific use case. That, that's that's not you know that, that's not why I'm I'm skeptical uh, to some extent about iPad for work. Um, but it's just 
uh, there's a lot to gain from from having a large screen and a precision pointing device like a mouse or a trackpad and a real physical keyboard you can you can type with very quickly and with a very small uh, very low error rate uh, w- which is not necessarily uh, true true on iOS and the other thing is that the the model the the paradigm of iOS also can be limiting in fundamental ways like like the the thing that makes it great also limits it so everything has to go through the app store and it's difficult to for anyone um, to imagine that Apple changes that. And that just means that a lot of things that you can do on the Mac, you just, you cannot do on iOS because unless Apple approves it and there's a bunch of stuff they're just not going to approve, um, it's just not going to happen. And you will have no way to use it. Like that, that it's inherently kind of unhackable. Um, and on the Mac, you can you have a lot of a lot more leeway to make it, you know, serve the purposes you you need it to serve. And because of a kind of less strict um, security model, which is again a great feature of iOS, but it also makes it more difficult for apps to interact uh, with each other uh, very directly. Yeah. So um, very valid points, and uh, you make. Uh... A, a valid point, especially from from point of view of yeah. a programmer and a geek, right? And the person who really cares about this stuff and cares about you know like lots of the you know nuts and bolts of of the Mac, and um, and uh, on the iPad you don't have these nuts and bolts very often, or you they are just covered, and uh, they are not uh, accept uh, uh, um, accessible to you. So yeah, uh, I but. I, in the grand scheme of things, I think the iPad is reaching uh, this moment, or it's going to reach this moment at some point. But it's, I think it's it's, it's going there um, with the analogy of Steve Jobs, the trucks and the and the and the cars, like not exactly mm. trucks, but I would say you know specialized cars and just you know mainstream cars. And um, because and and for me, what was just um, what 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 was. And what is still uh, surprising is that even for a person like me, who is a geek as well, but who is right now a CEO of a company, uh, like I can really get most of my stuff done on the iPad, and I can do them uh, in a, a very efficiently and uh, and and uh, and you know as as, as I mentioned with lots of fun and um, in between. So. Um, uh, and and that's what I wanted to highlight that you know even for like a use case like mine I can still you know I can really already get lots of uh, lots done. Another thing that you uh, haven't mentioned uh, that we haven't mentioned in this show is the fact that for example as a programmer what you would normally do is you would set up like a, your local dev environment mm-hmm. on your computer. So for example on a Mac you know you would set up your your own server your own like you know things and I would always do that as well. And I remember when I was trying to set up my server on an iPad which is impossible. Um, I was I was I was frustrated that well, it wasn't possible. But then I realized why don't I outsource the server to the server actually, you know, and just set up a, a dev server somewhere else and, and use it, you know, through the internet because my iPad is connected to the internet all the time, um, apart from <laughs> being on an airplane sometimes. Um, so this way I could just, I can develop on the iPad, save it, and then just, you know, run it on the server, which is outside. And so, I, so I, I can really outsource the computing power when I need it. And right now with, you know, EC2, like with the Amazon cloud and all these things, you can actually, you know, um, outsource lots of computing power uh, and you don't need it locally. You can, you know, execute it uh, on the on the servers. So um, so I was surprised that it actually worked. And and uh, I said, just set up my environment outside of my iPad and uh, was still, you know, coding. Yeah, I mean, you, you can do it for some web stuff, for sure, but it's just very limiting and, and, and you know, put, putting it in the cloud is is a hack. Like like that. That's one of the things. I mean, sure, writing code is is very like specialized uh, exactly. thing. So it's it's understandable that that iPad isn't isn't built for that, and I don't expect it to. But it just mm-hmm. the it's kind of fundamental security model and just the model of the OS doesn't allow you to. Uh, it just doesn't work with the way developer tools are are built. The way the dev- developers need. Um, you know the capabilities of the OS developers need the access to the OS developers need to just have their tools um, 
set up yeah. and, and not just in some limited no. way that some app created like uh, there's Coda, Coda uh, light and stuff like that but just the way you, you need to yeah I uh, totally agree um, although my ID on the, the, the iPad is actually better than the one I have on the Mac so well <laughs> anyway the thing is what I, what I was arguing with my book iPad only years ago and what I'm arguing now still is that with a, a, a right mindset more people could be using an iPad as their main computer than right. they think, right? Like the, 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 than we think. So yeah, I mean, I won't argue that you know, you know, for some reasons, as you mentioned, you know, the cursor, like it thinks, you know, access to some, you know, like, like I won't argue with any of what you said. Uh, you need these um, uh, workflows. You need these specialized ways of using the computer. So uh, I would argue that. And I argue that, of course, I also have some fun using my iMac uh, from time to time and, and having it here, you know, with a big screen and stuff. I, I, I like it. Um, but because I made the switch to the iPad, I realized I can get things done on an iPad. I can get them very well done. And I, I, I want to argue that many more people could do that and would actually work better, would have the constraints on them right there because they are by default there. So they would, I think, work more productively, have more deep work, as we discussed before. So really, I, I and have more fun in, you know, in the process. So I think, uh, then, you know, I would challenge people to, to try, to try to set this up and, and uh, you know, uh, follow, you know, my blog post on my blog or, or the book or whatever, like, the, or just go to VTG's website. Uh, so, <laughs> um, Although Vidic is, you know, he's, uh, I love Federico, but he's, you know, he's very, you know, like very, very technological about it. Uh, and for the beginners, it might be just uh, too much. But on the other hand, once you reach that level, you know, you want Vidic's uh, uh, Mac stories. So anyway, it's funny that his thing is called Mac stories. It could be iPads. It should be iPad stories anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. But anyway, that's what I'm saying. That I think, and, and, and that's why I was arguing with my book years ago many more people would be uh, could be using the iPad and for mar much more like for like you know 70 80 percent of their stuff would, could be done on the iPad in very similar way if not even more productive way than on the Mac and uh, and I think you know as, as we as we discussed new entrants to, to, to computers like people who who haven't you know been using computers very often they the iPad is the one the, the only one computer that they need to to, to get things done yeah my, my... The, the thing you said about s something being their main computer, uh, I think it's true, but also the problem with that for now, uh, we'll see how that, that evolves in the future, but for now is that uh, there really is a lot of things that uh, are impossible or just really hard to do on an iPad. And few people are, you know, geeks like us that would want to have both an iPad Pro with like treating this as a as their main computer and you know some PC on a or, or a Mac that for you know uh, to use sometimes for for the the things they they needed to, um, but you know we'll, we'll see how, how that that evolves. Yeah, I mean I remember my my main complaint when I was using the iPad like initially was for example that I couldn't record the video calls right mm. because I, I couldn't. But now, for example, we use Zoom to, to record this. I mean, we record locally, locally but we use Zoom to, 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 to see each other. And right now, again, I can use Zoom to record in the cloud. So I can just invoke a recording, video recording uh, in Zoom on the iPad, and it records the video recording and it's stored in the cloud. So again, I'm outsourcing <laughs> uh, things to the cloud and I can still record the video, which is cool. Anyway, um, I'm curious because uh, we're ordering an iPad for you. So I'm curious how much you will hmm. be doing on the iPad and how, how you will you know, configure your iPad and how, um, like how, how much use you'll get out of it. Because uh, I've seen you, uh, you know, playing with the iPad several times. Uh, you, know, you, know, you have an iPad mini, um, you know, tinkering with the thought of maybe doing some more on the iPad. So I'm just really curious uh, you know, how your journey is going to go. Well, I, I guess you, you just spoiled it. I I actually was in a my my reseller store um, here in, in in my city, and I was playing with the the new iPads, and the 120 hertz thing is just amazing. It's so smooth, and the the latency of the pencil is just incredible. So, yep, I I am I am getting an iPad Pro. Um, I am skeptical about the idea that it would actually be superior or beneficial uh, to me to, to try to do more things on an iPad outside of um, 
kind of consumption of media, which is what I do with my iPad mini right now. Um, but I feel like we got to the point with the new iPad hardware and, and iOS 11 that um, it, it's worth a try uh, because even if the iPad cannot replace a Mac for me, if it can replace a Mac or a PC for a lot of people, uh, then that's something I should be concerned with um, as someone who makes software. 